Okay, so we're going to talk about dimensioning, which is considered an annotation object in AutoCAD. Okay, um, it's actually very cool. Some of you have already played with it. I call it point and shoot. Um, so it pretty much does all your work for you. There's a lot to it though. Um, a lot of you guys think you're doing it right and you're really not. <laughs> okay, so you got to be careful with dimensions because if you just eyeball two endpoints, that's going where you eyeball. It's not actually necessarily going specifically on the object itself. Okay, so that's, a, that's an important distinction. So I, if you haven't created another layer already, I'm going to do it on mine. I've got to create a layer. I'm going to give it a unique color. I think you guys will be able to see magenta pretty well. You can use any color you want. We're going to make that the current layer. Okay. So let's start off and talk about what a dimension is first. I'm just going to come over here and place this. All right. So we're looking at, this is called a dimension object, but what a lot of people think a dimension is when you hear that term is just the textual piece of it or the letter piece of it. So in other words, my 8.0928, that's considered the dimension, okay? But in AutoCAD, we consider the whole thing here, this whole object is considered the dimension. Notice when I click on it, whatever's highlighted there is the dimension, okay? So this is called a very simple linear dimension. So it's giving you a distance based on uh, something. So there are parts to this dimension, and not all dimensions have these parts, but we're going to look at this one, and then I'm, I'm going to give these guys names, and that's really critical so that when you get into doing what's called a dim style, you know what you're doing, okay? So the first thing we're looking at <coughs> is this line right here and this line over here. Those have names. Does anybody know? the name of those or heard those before anybody done any drafting before no those are called dimension lines sometimes they're referred to as witness lines okay so this guy right here this is called an ex an extension line and that's an extension line notice most linears will have two extension lines one left and one right one top one the bottom maybe those can be turned off so you could turn one off and have one on, or you could have both of them off, depending on how you're dimensioning, okay? Because I'll show you why you might want to turn those off. This guy right here that runs from the tip of that arrow to the tip of that arrow, that's called your dimension line. That's usually parallel with the object that you're dimensioning, okay? So that's your dimension line. In our case, because the text is sitting down in the middle of this, we have a dimension line one and a dimension line two. Okay, so there's actually two, and you could suppress one and not the other, or you could do it both. If the text is sitting above this thing, it'll be one continuous line, and then you will not have two. Okay, attached to the end point of that dimension line, that thing right there, it's called a dimension arrowhead. And there's usually two. They're usually the same style. AutoCAD has probably 25, 30 different arrowheads that you can choose from. Or you can make your own up. Or you can have none. So it just depends on what you're doing. We'll talk about some of these different ones. And usually what you have on the left side, you have on the right side. But you can have something one side and something different on the other. Okay, so you can you can set this up depending on what your discipline is. Every discipline's a little bit different. Okay, get the idea. All right, so this thing right here, that's a piece of text. That is an M text object. It's a multi-line text object. So I didn't really go over multi-line text with you. I showed you what's called single-line text. Now, some of you are using multi-line text when you're placing text, so it's a little bit different. It's a little bit more, more complex, but this is actually an M text object, a multi-line text object, okay? Now, you'll notice at the base, and you see there's a little dot down here, right there, and there's an also a little dot down here, and if I click on that, you can see the little grip showing up there. 
That is called a def point, short for definition point. And that's really what it's doing the measurement with. Okay? So it's usually measuring from def point to def point. You can never get rid of your def points, but they do not show up on your drawing because they will automatically go on a layer called def points. Now, if you were playing with dimensions like you were, <laughs> if you go to the layer, you'll see there's a def points layer showing up there now. So anytime you create a dimension, you automatically get a def points layer created. Okay, You cannot very easily get rid of this layer. And this layer also is very special because even though it looks like it will plot, it will never plot. So any object that you put on this layer will not plot, even though it will be visible on the screen. So it's an automatic no plot layer. You can never turn that on. And it's harder than heck to get rid of. Okay, there is there are ways to get rid of that layer, but really not easily. Okay, and if you have a dimension on, you can't terminate it. So if I tried to get rid of it now, I couldn't because this guy's sitting there. Okay, is everybody with me on that? Okay, so extension line, dimension line, dimension arrowhead, multi-line text. Def point, short for definition point, def point, okay? So those are critical. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and delete this, and let's look at, uh, there's a couple of different places we can find dimensioning. If we are at the Home tab, under the Annotation section, you have this guy, which is kind of a quick dimension. It kind of guesstimates what you want to do, and it'll put them down there for you pretty quickly. If you want to have more control, you can go to here to this group called linear. And actually that isn't linear, it's just a bunch of commands. So what you have underneath this is that command is dim linear, dim aligned, dim angular, dim arc, dim radius, dim diameter, dim ordinate, and then what they call dim jog. Okay? Those are dimension creation tools dimension creation tools okay this area doesn't let you do much editing okay so it's just basically creating them if you drop the annotation section down you will see this guy right here this is called your dim style if you click on this it takes you to the dim style manager the dimension style manager there's a lot going on in this box and we're going to take a look at it toward the end okay but this is how you control how your dimension looks. This forces how that dimension looks. It's kind of like the style command we talked about with text. Style forces how the text looks, right? But there's only a few variables in that box, maybe six. This box has about probably 100 variables. So that dimension is driven by all these different little variables that make it look a certain way, okay? But it's actually pretty easy once we learn how to use it. So we'll, we'll take a look at that, okay? So you can just close this. All right. If you go to the Annotate tab, you will notice there's a dimension panel. And some of the commands are the same. There's your quick dimension. And there's your linears and you know all the other ones. But then you have editing tools in here, like dimension break or linear jog. And you have um continue or baseline dimensioning uh you also have some editing tools down here so we're going to take a look at those as well okay all right so what we're going to do you can stay at this box if you want okay that would be fine we're going to start to do some dimensioning so make sure that your layer is not the zero layer because you're not going to see anything so we're going to start out with doing a very simple linear and a linear will do one of three types of dimensions. Horizontal, which would be this way. Vertical, which would be this way. Or rotated, which would be some angle that you have to supply other than horizontal or vertical. Okay? So we're going to do a linear, and we're going to start out at the end. We're going to dimension this guy from that point to that point. So there's two ways to do this. I'm going to show you those. We're going to go in 
to the linear and it should be asking you to specify the first extension line. What it's really saying is place the def point. Def point. Now you don't want to eyeball this stuff. You want to make sure you're using OSNEFT. So when I come over here, if I don't get that green endpoint popping up, then I don't want to click it because I'm just clicking it wherever it is. So when I see that green box, I'm good to go. You left click. Everybody good? Then it wants to know the second one. Hit the second point, and then you can drag this guy down to place the dimension line, and then you go click and you're good to go. Point and shoot. That's what I call it. Point and shoot. Right? Is everybody okay with that? Getting it to work? Now understand the way this thing looks is being driven by that dim style. We're getting a certain arrowhead with a certain size, we're getting a certain tax with a certain style we're getting the height we're getting all this stuff and we'll go over that here in a minute in a minute did everybody get that to work all right so here's another way you can do the same thing but a whole lot easier i'm going to go in and do another linear and when it asks me to specify uh an endpoint just hit enter and then it'll say well then just select an object so you just come and select this object and hit enter it finds your def points for you. It finds your def points for you. So you don't have to worry about as much being aligned with endpoints or midpoints or something like that. Everybody care about that? And then when it wants you to give it a def point or a dimension line location, I can use an O snap and line it up with the endpoint of that arrowhead. And now they're perfectly aligned. Anybody know what's happening right here? where the one dimension hits the other. When I click on this, do you notice I get an extension line on the right side? When I click this one, I get an extension line on the left side. So what am I showing you? There's an extension line on top of an extension line. Okay. So that's not typically great to do that. But in the printers that we use nowadays, it's not a big deal. But in the old days, when I would use a plotter, it would take a pin and it would strike this once, and then it would come back with the pin and it would strike it again. And you could really see that that line was thicker than the other ones. Okay, so that could have been a problem. Anybody okay with that? Or everybody okay with that? All right. So if we look at um, this guy right here, we're going to dimension this. So this is a vertical dimension. Again, going to use a linear. I'm going to pick endpoint to endpoint, and I'm going to pull that guy here, and I'm going to place him. What do you notice about what's happening here? Right. The extension line is going over the part. Now that is bad. Okay, that's real bad. So that's something that we need to fix. So what we would have to do is either suppress that extension line, or we could do what's called swap the draw order. We could put the dimension law or the dimension object behind um, the part. I'll show you how to do this later. That would be called an editing technique. Okay, an editing technique. All right. So I want to look at the. If you look at my little diagram. I have a string of dimensions. That's called a dimension string. It goes from left to right, two inches, and then three inches, and three inches, and two inches. When you're doing that, you're doing what's called a continuous string of dimensions. So instead of going in and picking a point, picking a point, and keep doing that, there's an automatic way to do this, and it's called a continue dimension. So what we have to do first is lay down a linear and then we're going to do a continue, okay? So what I want you to do, follow me, go to linear, pick the left side def point, and then the right side def point, and then place your dimension, just like that, okay? So that's just a normal linear. Now we're going to do what's called a continue. We're going to continue off of that, and it continues off of the second def point. That's why I wanted to pick left to right. Okay, so the continue option, 
If you're not under the annotate tab, make sure you go to the annotate tab. We're going to see right in the same row, this guy that's called continuous. Open that up. You'll notice there's continue and baseline. So make sure you select continue. And notice it knows which dimension you're talking about. So then you just pick endpoint, endpoint, endpoint. And then when you're done, you hit enter. So that just made it a little bit easier to do. This is something that architects do a lot. You'll see this in architectural drawings. You'll see this on some mechanical drawings. So this tends to be more discipline specific. Okay. So I could have done the same thing using linear, but I just was able to do it easier doing that, right? That's pretty cool, right? So that's called a continue option. Is everybody okay with that? Yes. Let me check it out. Okay. And also notice at the end, we also have another mistake here. And by the way, you're still getting extension line on top of extension line. So you do have that going on. Again, I don't worry about that too much. I do worry about a, going over a part, but I don't worry about it here. Okay. Because I can't really see. Is that working for you now, guys? Yep. Cool. All right. So we are going to do. What you just did before <laughs> the baseline. Okay. So if you look on my diagram over on the side here, I'm showing you a different format, and this is called a baseline dimension. So what you have is one, one extension line that everything's coming off of the same extension line. That's called your baseline. So the continue worked off the second def point. Baseline will work off the first def point. Okay, so you have to be aware of that. So we're gonna place a linear, and we're going to go endpoint to endpoint and pull this guy out like that. Okay. And then we're going to do what's called a base point or baseline, excuse me, baseline. And then you just pick an endpoint and pick an endpoint, and you could keep doing that. But when you get done, you're hit enter. Okay. So this is called your baseline down here. And notice you got one, two, three extension lines on top of each other. Okay. So that, again, that could be a bad thing, but normally we don't worry about it. Right. This is a, this is a different type of dimensioning. You don't see, probably mechanical guys use this more than the civils, but it just depends. What do you notice about this though? What's not good here? The text from the one is hitting into the dimension of the other and the text, right? So what's driving that is my dim style. So there's a setting in here. We could beef up the distance between the dimension lines or we could decrease the text size. We could decrease the, uh, the, the um, precision. So there's a lot of different ways we could handle that and we will here in a bit. Okay, so we're not worried about that right now. All right, let's, so let's take a look over here so what we got going on over here, this is a diagonal line. So if we try to do a linear, notice if I select that point and that point, if I drag it this way, I get a horizontal. If I drag it this way, I get a vertical. Well, that isn't what I want. I want it to be parallel with this object. So you might notice in here, there's a rotation option or rotated option. Did you see that? If you click on the rotated option, you can give it an angle. I can actually pick the two points of that. So now it's going to go parallel with that. So now the dimension line is perfectly parallel with that. Okay. So that's called a rotated option. Not getting it to work. All right. Let me do it again. I'm going to back it out. So I'm doing a linear, linear, and I'm picking endpoint and endpoint. So notice if I drag it this way, horizontal, if I drag it this way, it's vertical. Down at the command line, notice it says rotate it. If you click the rotated option, you can supply an angle. 
Now, I picked two points, but let's say I typed in 30 degrees. So if I typed in 30 degrees, notice it's going to be at a 30 degree slant. Okay. So you got to be careful because if you get the wrong angle, that obviously isn't the distance I want, is it? No, it's not. All right. So if you're going to use a rotated dimension, you need to do it right. Okay. So I'm going to show you a better one. Okay. Instead of using a linear, they have another option up there called an aligned dimension. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to delete this. We're going to go to this guy where it says linear, open that up. And you notice, oh, there's an aligned option here. So we're going to go to the aligned and then you just pick the two endpoints and it, it knows exactly what you're talking about. Okay. So a linear is basically an, a rotated or a, I'm sorry, an aligned is basically a rotated linear and it does the angle for you instead of you having to figure out the angle. Okay. You got the idea guys, everybody. Okay, pretty easy, isn't it? So the key on this, remember, is using O snaps. Okay, if you're eyeballing any of this junk, you're just not getting it right. Okay, just not getting them right. All right, so let's take a look at Angular. So an Angular would allow me to give an angle between, let's say, two lines, or I can do the angle of an arc on a circle or a little arc. So we're going to go to this guy, open it up, and we're going to grab this one that is called Angular. Angular. So this has got two options on it. And a lot of people don't know how to use this properly. So notice it says arc, select arc, circle, or line. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to pick that line first and that line second. And then notice when I drag this out, it says 45. If I come down here, it says 135. Over here, it says 45, and over here, it'll say 135. So no matter how I try, I can't get that to come around and say 315 for me, okay? But go ahead and we'll just place it at 45 right there, okay? Notice what's also cool about this one, which I wish they would do that with their other ones, that it did not put extension lines in on top of objects. Do you guys see that? But notice if I drag this guy over there, it does put an extension where it needs it. So this one has more intelligence built into it than the linears, and I'm not sure why AutoCAD has never gotten around to figuring that out. <laughs> but it seems like they could do the same thing with the linears, but they don't have that. So you still have to handle something that's going on down here or something that's going on over here. We still have to handle that. All right, but we still we're still not getting 315, right? So if we want to do the major arc here, you, you can't pick the two objects. You have to do what's called a vertex option. Okay. So here's how we do this. Pretty simple. Go into the angular mode again. And instead of selecting an arc, a circle, or a line, you just hit enter. And then it'll say, specify your vertex. So you just pick the point where the vertex is. Make sure you're getting the vertex. Then it wants to know another endpoint and a third endpoint. And notice if I drag it this way, I'm getting the minor arc. If I drag it that way, I'm getting the major arc. You can align those guys up. But this one is not so intelligent because what do you notice? You're getting what? Extension lines with it? Because this one is not based on objects. This is based on three points. So there's a big difference. You see the difference? You see how that's working, guys? Okay, so Angular is pretty cool. Pick two objects, you place, or you can go vertex and three points. All right, everybody okay? All right, let's uh, change up uh, something here. I'm going to go back to my uh, home tab and I'm going to change the layer back to the zero layer real quick. We're going to draw a couple of objects. I want you to draw a circle. And I would like you to draw a three-point arc. So just a very simple three-point arc. Okay. All right. So I'm going to now go back 
and I'm going to put my layer back to that layer right there. Okay, so I want to make that. So I'm going to do some dimensioning. And we can stay here if you want, but I think I'm just going to go back to, well, we'll, we'll go right here. So if you're at the home tab, under the annotate section, there's three more that we want to look at. If you open up where it says linear, we have arc length, radius, and diameter. So those are the three we're going to look at. So arc length, that's going to give me the bent distance around a circle or um, on, a, on an arc. So if we choose arc length, we select the arc, hit enter, you can place it like that. And that's giving me the bent distance around. That would be this bent distance around this guy. Okay. And you get that little arc length symbol that goes with it. And so that's telling you it's not a straight distance, it's a bent distance essentially. Does anybody know what the distance between the endpoints would be called? There's, there's a term for that. No. The distance, not cross section is usually an area. Yeah. The distance from that endpoint to that endpoint is called a chord. C H O R D, chord. So, how would we get that chord distance? No, we don't need to draw one. We can do a linear, but if you do a linear, you better do a rotated. So you want to use what? You want to use, you want to use the aligned. And I would pick that point to that point. That would be the chord distance. What do you notice about the chord distance versus the arc length? Is it greater or less? Chord distance versus the arc length. Four distance is what? Less. Is that true? Is that true? Should that be true? It should always be true, right? So if you come up with something that's, uh, if you came up with a distance there that was greater than that, that arc length, you got a problem. Something's not right. It can't be. Okay. It's an impossibility physically. Okay. See how that works, guys? All right. So let's look at the circle. So the circle, we could do things like diameter or radius. So if we come here, there's radius, very simple. Just select your arc or circle and pull it out. And there's the radius of that guy. And notice it also puts in a little symbol. Sometimes it doesn't always do that, but it'll usually put in that little symbol in the center, which is showing you your center point of your arc. So notice that's there. Now notice if I drag that guy inside, I think that thing will disappear. Yeah, disappeared, but I still have a def point there. So, so there's my radius. Can't, doesn't get any harder than that. Notice that something that's also true about this. This line should always point in to the center. Okay, it's never going to point like some other direction. Okay, so notice wherever I take this thing, it's always pointing into the center. Does everybody see that? Always points into the center. All this stuff, by the way, that we're talking about right here, the inventor is going to do the exact same thing for you with, with, in terms of dimensioning. And it almost works exactly the same way. So once we figure out how to do dimensioning in AutoCAD, once we get to inventor, it's going to be basically the same thing. Okay. All right, diameter. Diameter. Same area. Pick your arc or your circle. Something locked up there. Diameter, pick your arc or circle, pull it out. Notice that the diameter is double what the radius is. And you get that little symbol, that circle with the line through it. That's a diameter symbol and R means radius. Those two symbols are hard coded in your text. You can't get rid of it. You can edit it out, but if you do that, you're locking the text up, okay? So there's no way easy to get rid of those symbols. All right. That little symbol here, though, you can get rid of that symbol pretty easily. 
but you can't get rid of that symbol or that symbol for some reason the way they've got it set. And I guess it makes sense so that people know that that's always a, a, a associated with an arc or a circle. Does everybody get the idea? What do you think will happen if we change the size of that circle? Let's check that out. What I'd like you to do is this. Pick on that circle, and you notice you get blue, blue grip boxes, right? Select the middle grip, and then just hit the space bar one, two, three times, and it should say scale. Does it say scale? Type in 0.5 and hit enter. My circle is twice as big as it was, and you'll notice that my my radius and my diameter edited right along with it. That's pretty cool. So what's happened? Did you guys get that to work? So what's happening there? The object is driving the dimension. The object is driving the dimension. So as the dimension as the object changes, the dimension is changing too, right? Is anybody gonna ask a question? Yes. When I scaled the circle, why didn't the, the lines and everything get scaled down or up too? Because I wasn't scaling the dimension, I was scaling the part. So here's the question I wanted somebody to ask me, nobody did. If the object can drive the dimension, is it possible for the dimension to drive the part? In other words, if I clicked on that and made that five, would that make that diameter of that circle five? Well, in AutoCAD, the answer is no. In Inventor, guess what? The answer is yes. So in Inventor, the object can drive the dimension, but the dimension can also drive the part. So what that means is if you wanna, if you wanna make this distance right here five inches, and in Inventor, all I have to do is click on that, say five, and it's gonna go up five. In AutoCAD, it won't work that way, okay? The only thing that's driving that is the object is driving the object is driving the dimension. Okay, so there's a difference, and we will see how that works when we get into Inventor a little bit, okay? Okay, so that's pretty cool. But it's not as cool in AutoCAD as it is in Inventor, okay? Is everybody okay with this so far? Pretty simple, right? Okay, great. So those are what we would call AutoCAD creation techniques. Creation. So let's uh, take a look at editing tools now. So dimensions very rarely just come down exactly the way you want them to be. They don't place really nicely sometimes. Let's just put it, they don't play, they don't play nice in the sandbox sometimes, okay? So we have to, we have to edit them. We have to uh, sometimes do a little bit of tweaking. Now, if you're doing a lot of editing on a dimension, you're doing it the wrong way, okay? So I'm going to give you a couple of different ways you can edit dimensions, actually quite a few, and I'll show you some of the best ones. So first off, these dimensions are considered um, associative. What that means is they are associated with the part. So watch, if I take this part and I move the part, you notice how the dimensions are updated with it, right? You see that? So that means they're associative. I can take a dimension and make it non-associative when I create it, which is really not a smart thing to do. Or you can kill the dimension by exploding it. So if I take the object here, select that object, and hit the X key, does it look any different? Doesn't look any different, does it? But it's blown apart. So that's a line. That's a line. That's a piece of text. It lost all of its intelligence and it lost all of its in associativeness. Bottom line, that's not an editing tool. 
You do not want to explode a dimension. That's about the dumbest thing you can do for a dimension, okay? You really don't want to do that, all right? All right, so I'm going to undo that because remember, that's not smart. All right, so def points is one great way of editing dimensions if all you want to do is move around um, pieces of the dimension, okay? So let's take this, let's take this 10 inch dimension here and just click on him. And you get these things called grips. And you got, you got a grip here at the def point. You got a grip here at the arrowhead. You got a grip here at the piece of text. So if we want to move this, we can click on that grip right there. And it lets me slide it left to right. And as I can take that to a midpoint, I can place it at the midpoint of that object. And notice he updated. All right. If I want to move the text location, I select the dimension, hit the text grip. Notice that text slides left, it slides right, it slides up and down. Now there are some text that you can set that it will disassociate from the actual dimension line. So you can actually pull it out separate. This one is not set to do that. That's a dim style issue. Okay, that's a dim cell issue. Yep. That's what happens. Yeah. You guys getting that to work? Death points or um, grips? What's it called? Grips. So grips allow you to do some pretty cool things. We'll talk about some more grip things when we get to this. Uh, I'll get to there in a minute. So I'm going to show you a group of tools that are pretty cool when it comes to moving certain things around. You can do, you've got two text commands. One's called dim. T edit. The other one is called dim edit. Dim T edit, the T stands for text, and it's obvious. And it'll only work on a single dimension at a time. If you do dim edit, it is also text editing, but it'll allow you to do multiple pieces of text at one time. I'm going to show you what I mean by that, okay? Now, you can find some of these. If you go to the annotate tab, go to your annotate tab, the dimensions, and if you open this guy right here, some of these little tools down here, these are Tim edit commands, okay? But I want to show you if you type it in, you get a little bit more control. Okay, so we're going to type in the word dim, D I M T edit, dim T edit, and hit enter. So it asked me to select a dimension. So you can only do this on one dimension. That's why it says select dimension. I'm going to select that guy right there. So notice when I do that, it automatically allows me to start moving my text around, right? But at the bottom of the screen, you'll notice there's options left, right, center. So if you want to just move it to the left, you just type in L and hit enter, and it moved it over to the left for you. So you don't even have to move it physically, all right? Go back into that command, dim t edit. Select that same dimension. Tell it to go to the center. Center, put it in its center position. All right? And we're going to do that one more time. Dim. T edit. And we're going to select that dimension and we're going to rotate this. So we're going to use what's called an angle. And I want to take 
that text and make it 30 degrees. And so notice how it rotated that piece of text 30 degrees. Okay. Are you guys getting that to work? No. Nope. So that's cool, but what happens if I wanted all that text to be 30 degrees? I don't want to select each and every one of those and then go 30 degrees and have to do that. That's a pain in the butt. So we can do this real easily by using that command called dim edit. So we just type in dim edit, enter, and this option is now called rotate. So I just type in R for rotate, say 30 degrees. And then when it asks me to select objects, just type in the word all and hit enter twice. And it weeded out anything that wasn't a dimension and anything that was a dimension, it rotated at 30 degrees. Now you will not find that little command on their menus in the ribbon. You need to know how to get to that one, okay? They have the single rotate on there, but they don't have the multiple. Okay, which is kind of cool. Did everybody see how that worked? All right, so there's another couple of cool things in there. One is called obliquing. If you take this guy up here, drop your dimensions down. Notice this guy right here, that's called an oblique. So oblique is where you take and you kick the dimension lines, or I'm sorry, the extension lines at some angle. Now there are a lot of disciplines that would not accept this. They don't, they don't think that's a good thing. And, and so you gotta be careful when you use this, okay? But if I would do this oblique, I'm gonna select this guy right here to oblique. And when I'm done, I hit enter. And then just tell it the obliquing angle, let's say 30 degrees. And notice how it obliques at 30 degrees like that. So there's a lot of disciplines that would not accept that as a, as a standard type of way of doing it. But you will see that in my business, I see that. Civils will use that. Architects will use that occasionally. But you've got to be careful when you look at that. What distance is it talking about? Does anybody know? You know, and that, that's why a lot of people don't like using obliques because what they're actually talking about, this distance right here is three as opposed to maybe that distance, okay? So you, you might think that it's talking about a different distance than it actually is. And that's why, that's why a lot of people, quite frankly, don't use it, okay? But you will see it. You'll see it occasionally used. And that's what they call an obliquing angle, okay? Or an oblique dimension, oblique dimension. Okay, all right, let's look at a couple of other editing tools. There's some pretty, really, really cool stuff within AutoCAD. I'm going to take, let's take our text and we're going to knock our text all the way back to what its original position was. So what we're going to do is going to go into DIM. We're going to type in DIM. T, I'm sorry, we're going to go DIM edit, not T edit. DIM edit. We're going to say rotate. We're going to make the rotated angle zero. And then we're going to type in all to select all the objects. So it took all of those back to their original positions. Okay. So here's a couple of things that are really neat about uh, shortcuts. If you click on a dimension and grab one of the grips, then you right click, you're gonna get all kinds of really cool tools built into that.
So you can move with a dimension line, you can move text only. So if I want to move with a dimension line, notice when I pull, uh, that, what, that didn't work. Hold on a minute. <laughs> See if it'll move with a leader. If I pull that out with a leader, notice it, it allowed me to move that text independent of that. The, the extension line stayed where it was, but the text moved. Let me do that again. I'm clicking on the object. I'm right uh, left clicking in that grip. I'm sorry, I'm not left clicking. I'm just letting it sit there. When you let it sit in that grip, then you get shortcuts. Move with dimension line, move text only, move with leader. So if I do say move with leader, then it allows me to move it out anywhere I want. And that thing's called a leader right there. Okay. So that's kind of a neat tool. Here's another one. This is one that's really good. If you want to change the precision on this, just click on that guy right there, right click. And notice there's a couple of shortcuts up here, but one's precision. Okay, so again, all I did was select it on a dimension object, right clicked, go to precision, and I can knock that down to two decimal places. Do the same thing here, precision to two, and precision here to two. Now, if you're doing that, for every dimension that you're placing, you're doing it wrong because there's another way that we could do this. And what's happening is that's being driven by what we call a dim style. So we could do that across the board through a dim style change. Okay. So if you just have one or two that you want to change, you want most of them to be three or four decimal places, but you only want a couple that were two, that's an easy way of changing it. Okay. You guys seen how that works? Those are actually pretty cool, awesome tools. All right, so here's another way we can change uh, dimensions up. All right, so we're going to go, I want you to click on this guy right here. This is the one that has that, what we might say that's an offending, uh, it's an offending extension line. It's, it's, it's sitting on top of a part. We don't want it on top of that part, right? So we're going to right click and we're going to go to properties, properties. This is the ultimate editing tool for any dimension. Properties is the ultimate editing tool for any dimension. So what we're going to do, notice in this box now, you have the general properties, color, layer, line type, all of that good stuff. But if you come down below, now you see lines and arrows, text, Keep dragging down, you'll go to fit, primary units, alternate units. You see all those little guys? Those are called dimension variables. And every one of those little settings is driving how this thing works. And those are all part of what's called the dim style, which we'll take a look at here in a minute. But if I want to get rid of that extension line, that offensive extension line, what I would do is go to the lines and arrows section and I'm going to find what's called extension line one and extension line two. Do you find that extension line one, extension line two? Do you notice they're both on, right? Everybody see that? Well, what determines one and two is the order that you pick your depth points. So if you remember when we placed this, this would have been depth point one, that would have been depth point two. So I'm going to go down to extension line two and turn that guy off. And you notice that when I turn it off, what happens? He's gone. All right, so I was able to change that. I can change all kinds of things in here. For instance, if I wanted to make a text change, I could go into text and I could change the, um, oh, let's see. Let's uh, change the height. Instead of 0.18, let's say we wanted to make it 0.12. Notice my text got smaller. I could also tell my text, I don't want centered horizontal or vertically. I want it above the dimension line. So when I do that, it moved it above. You see how I'm doing all this tweaking? What I'm doing is I'm tweaking or overriding 
the dim style of that dimension. All right. But you've got just about everything you want to tweak in a dimension is in that box right there called your properties change box. Okay. So now, once I get that dimension looking the way I want it to, let's go ahead and close this box and escape out so that that guy's no longer highlighted. Okay. Everybody got that? Watch this. We're going to go back to the home tab. And I want you to find match props for me. Anybody see match properties? Anybody tell me where match properties is? See the properties panel? It's in that right there. So select match props, select the one we just tweaked, and then come over here and select all the rest of those. And anyone that you select is going to take on the format of what you just changed things to. Okay. That's a really cool tool because you can tweak one dimension and you can override a bunch of them by using match props. All right. Everybody see that? But what we're doing, and you need to understand this, we are doing what's called overriding the dim style. So there's a major style right there. Hold on a minute. All right, so there's a style there that is driving how this thing works. And so what's happening is we overrode it, okay? So the ultimate tool that you have out there to work with dimensions is what's called the dim style, the dimension style. So we're gonna take a look at that, okay? So let's go ahead and uh, you can just kind of stay right here at this level and what we're going to do is go to the dim style. Now you can find the dim style several different places. If you just type in the word dim style, it'll pop up. So if I type in the word, I can get it. If I go to the annotation section, if I'm at the home tab and I go to annotation, I can click on that button right there and I can get it. Okay. Those are your two easiest places to get it. If you are in the annotate tab, notice under the dimension panel, there's this little drop down arrow going kind of southeast. You click on that, and that will take you to that. So we got kind of three ways to get there. Okay. So what we're going to do is I don't care where you do it from, grab this box. This is called your M style manager. So all of those little properties we were looking at and properties. They're all in this box. And what you're doing is setting them up to make it look the way you want it to. So I'm going to go, I'm not going to go through all of them. We don't need all of them. But right now, I want you to notice AutoCAD has supplied for you two DIM styles. One is called annotative, and the other one is called standard. Standard is the current style. So we're going to look at standard. I want you to go to standard, and I want you to do what's called a modify. Okay? Modify. So modify brings it into modifying this dim style, which is named standard. And it is broken down into tabs across the top. You have lines, symbols and arrows, text, fit, primary units. And if you're working in two dimensions at the same time, so you could be both in imperial and metric at the same time, then you could toggle on your alternate units. And if you're doing uh, tolerancing things that a lot of mechanical guys do, then you can do tolerance settings. We're not going to look at all of these. I'm going to just look at lines, symbols, arrows, text, fit, and primary units today. Okay. So let's start out with lines. So lines govern basically two things, extension lines and dimension lines, okay? So notice at the top is dimension line, 
you can tell it what color you want it to be, what line type to use, what line weight. So those settings in there can override the layer setting, okay? But notice they say by block, by block, by block. So that means that they're basically reading what the current layer is saying, okay? So my current layer is magenta, so therefore the color is magenta. My current line type is continuous, therefore that. But I, I could have my dimension lines be green, even though it's going to be on the magenta layer, okay? So it's going to override. If you have a, uh, a, an arrowhead called a tick, then this thing called beyond ticks, extend beyond ticks will be on. But notice it's grayed out right now because normally, normally the dimension line does not extend beyond the extension line, okay? So right now that's grayed out. Baseline spacing, anybody take a guess what that governs? That's this distance between the two spacings here, okay? So it's set to point, what, 38 by default? So point 38, we could beef that up, we could make it smaller. If you have two dimension lines, such as I do here, and you want to suppress one, you could kick that on, it'll suppress that one, or it'll suppress that one, or it'll suppress both of them. Notice what's kind of cool, when I start tweaking around in there, that image tile up there will show you exactly what it's doing. So this little box is pretty friendly. But the thing to understand, each one of these things right here is, an, is a name. This is a system variable. That's a dimension variable, dimension variable, dimension. So all of these guys have different names. And uh, in the original days of AutoCAD, before they had these dialog boxes, you had to know these names and type them in to edit them. So it was really hard to do this. Now it's really simple. Okay. We go down to extension lines and you have, again, color, line type, line weight, override. So for instance, if I come down here and I say I want to make my extension lines red, notice what it'll do. It makes them red. But normally you don't want that. You usually want it by block. Suppress one, suppress two or suppress both, okay? So we can do that pretty easily in this style. Everybody see that? Okay, let's uh, go to the, the symbols and arrows. So this is where we grab the symbols for the arrows and we size them. Now if you open up the very top one there that says first arrow, notice it's using one called a closed fill, but notice there's quite a few in there. Closed fill, closed blank, closed dot, ticks, there's a whole bunch. And you can even create your own. So say you wanted to use a star at the end, okay? You could do that, you could create a little star and you could make that star your arrowhead. Or you can have no arrowhead. So they got a known setting here, right? So you have that for the first, the second, and then there's a thing in here called leaders, which I'm not going to go over because they have a thing called a multi-leader, which is a lot easier to use. If we have time, we'll go over to multi-leaders, okay? But I don't want to necessarily do that. Notice arrow size. Arrow size is the size of the arrow from the tip to the back part. So it's set to 0.18. Everybody see that? And normally, normally the way this works, the size of the arrow and the text height are going to be equal. I'll say that again. Whatever you use for your arrow height, your text should be the same. So you'll notice that the text height in this setting will be 0.18 because this is 0.18. Okay? We're going to change that up here in a minute. Um, this bottom piece down here governs what are called center marks. That thing right there in the center is a center mark. If you change it to that center line, notice how that symbol changes. That's called a center line. That's called a center mark. And that's giving you nothing. So these are associated when you do diameter or when you do ra uh, radius or diameter settings. That's when you're going to get those guys. Okay. The size of that, that 0.9, is the distance from the center of the mark over to the end point. Okay, so the total of that thing would be 0.18 by 0.18, okay, centered in. 
arc length symbol. Remember, we put that arc length symbol in there. If you don't want that, you can turn it off. Or you can set it above, or you can do that. Okay. So we have some cool tools in there. All right, let's take a look at text. Text is driven by a text style, right? So this is important when it's talking about this text style up here, you have to have a created text style. If you open up this box, you'll notice there's only two created text styles in here right now. But what's cool about this is if you hit that little box next to it called the ellipsis, if you click on that, it takes you to the text style dialog box. You can create a style right now and then close that and then use it. Okay. So you don't have to have the style pre-created. You can go in and create it on the fly while you're working. Okay. We'll do that here in a minute. All right. So your text style drives how the text looks. Color. That's a color override. Fill color. So you can have text placed in a box and then it can fill that in with a color. That's what that fill color is for. Text height. Notice there's your text height. That height is the same height as the, as the arrowhead was. So that's pretty standard. Arrowheads are always going to be equal to text heights. Okay, They're always going to be equal. Text placement. You've got center vertical or you can go, let's see, you can go above it. You can go center it. You can do what they call outside. In most cases, it just depends, again, what your discipline is. Horizontal position, normally that's centered, but you can have it closer to one extension line than the other. And of course, we said we could move that. Okay. All right, let's look at fit. So fit, this is, to me, this is the hardest box to deal with because you have buttons in there that interact with other buttons. So when you have when you have this setting on and that setting on, they're doing certain things together. My suggestion on this until you learn how to use it is just leave it alone. Usually I do what's called best fit here and I usually leave this all alone. Now the only thing I will mess with is this. If I'm working in model space or paper space, okay, that, that is a big difference there. So if I'm working in paper space, I like to put my dimensions on the paper and leave the part in model space. So what does what that does is allows me to keep my dimensions separate from my part, which is kind of nice. If I do that, then I need to make sure that I toggle on that one that says scale dimensions to layout. What that will do is read your part scale zoom factor properly and it'll give you the right it'll give you the right dimension. It will also make sure that all your dimensions look the same height. If you do your dimensioning in model space, you're going to have all your dimensions are going to look like different heights because they're going to be zoomed wrong. Okay. So there's a, it's an important factor. All right. So the last one we're going to look at, and then we're going to tweak this a little bit is what's called primary units. So no matter what your drawing units are set to, your dimensions can be different. So if you're in decimal on your drawing units, you can be doing architectural dimensioning or vice versa. Okay. And you have basically five linear units that they call it in there. Scientific decimal engineering, architectural fractional. And they got this other one called windows desktop. I'm not even sure what that one is. You also have angular unit settings as well. Okay. Notice they do not have surveyors units in there. That's one they don't have. Um, so you have your unit, your precision, and then you can put like a prefix or a suffix after that. So for instance, if you were in decimal unit, it's not going to tell you inch. It's not going to give you that inch mark, or it's not going to give you mm for millimeters. So what you could do is if you wanted that to meet, say, millimeters in your suffix, you could put mm for, for millimeters, okay? And it'll come in that way. Suppress zeros, leading, trailing. Some people don't like to see that. So if you don't want to see 0 0.5263, you can toggle that off. Or if you don't want it to say 0 0.50000, you can toggle off your trailing zero. So it just shows you 0 0.5. Okay, so those are those are what those are doing. All right. 
So we're gonna we're gonna make a dim style here. Let's just cancel out of this box. That way, in case anybody made any changes, they won't we won't make any mistakes. So we're gonna make our own dim, dim style here, and I'm just gonna do this to kind of show you how this works. Okay. So instead of modifying standard, we're gonna create a new dim style. So click on the new button. Clicking on the new button. So what you're going to do is it's going to take and make a copy of standard. My suggestion is you always leave standard alone. That way you always have it as a template to go back to. If you start messing with standard, you'll never know what the original settings were. Okay. So if I'm going to make changes, what I'm going to do is make a copy and then I'm going to make those changes. Okay. So I'm just not going to call this copy of standard. So what I'm going to call this is EMT EMET 110. So this is the EM, EMET 110 style. And I'm going to hit continue. So now what we're doing is you should notice at the top of the screen it doesn't say it doesn't say standard any longer. It says the name of your style that you're working under. So now we can start making changes. Okay. So we're going to make some changes that are kind of outrageous, just so you can see the difference. So let's start out with lines. And for the dimension lines, I'm going to make that dimension line red. So I'm going to override the color on the dimension line. I'm not going to change anything else down here, but I am going to change the color on the extension line. I'm going to make the extension line green. Okay. We're going to go to symbols and arrows. We're going to use a dot. Let's see. We're going to use a dot for the first, but we're going to use a closed fill arrow for the second. Okay. I'm going to make my arrow size slightly smaller, so I'm going to use 0.125 instead of 0.18. So since I used 0.125 there, I want to use 0.125 on my text height. Okay. All right. All right. We're going to leave everything else alone then. We're going to go over to text. Well, the only text we have to choose from right now is standard. So we're going to go over here and create our own text style. We're going to go here, create a new text style, call it style one. Instead of using Arial, I'm going to use Times New Roman. Times New Roman, regular. Now here's the really key thing when you do text in Dimension. You always, always, always leave the height factor to zero. Never set that to a value. If you set it to a value there, it will not read the value in the dim style. And what can happen is you'll dimension and your text will be this teeny little stuff. You can't see it, okay? It'll be real teeny. All right, so we're going to go ahead and apply those and close this. Now we can open this up and grab style one. Okay. We're going to leave the color alone, but we are going to change the text height to 0 0.125. 125. I'm going to place it vertically above like that. And then I'm going to hit OK. Oh, never mind. Sorry. Not don't do okay. <laughs> we'll go to fit. Sorry. We're going to go to one more change. We'll leave fit alone. Let's go to primary units. So right now we're at primary units of decimal. Okay. So let's leave it at decimal, but let's set the precision to two. And let's put a suffix symbol of an inch in there. And then we're going to hit okay and close this out. All right, so what I want you to do is come over here and delete those dimensions that were there and we're gonna place some new dimensions and see what happens. Now, what has happened is the last style that we created is automatically the current style. And if you open up, if you open up this style box right here, you'll notice you now have another style in this drawing, an MET, EMET. Uh, you have standard and you have annotated. Okay, so you have those three, right? So make sure that one's current. So we're going to do a 
linear dimension, linear. If you come over here, pick a point, pick a second point, notice what your dimension looks like. All of those changes that we made in there, they're all reflected by that. Everybody see that? Let's place a few more dimensions. So what I want to do is do a few more dimensions so that we can see them. So I want to do another, I'm going to do another linear from here to here and another linear from here to here. So notice those are all looking good, except notice one thing here, because of the pranks we were using, we see the arrow that's hitting into my thigh. Okay, so that's not a good thing necessarily. <laughs> that's the way that's working. All right, so everybody see how, we're, how this is coming about? <clears throat> okay, so here's some pretty cool things about this. So find one of these, let's grab a couple of these dimensions right there. Right click, go to properties. Under miscellaneous, you'll see dim style. The current dim style is standard if you wanna make that the EMT style. And then you can close it and deselect it. Notice what it's doing is it changed those to those current style settings. So just because a dimension was created within one setting doesn't mean you can't move it. And once you move it or change it to that new current style, it's gonna update everything for you. That's really cool, right? You guys see how that works really nicely? No? So you select your dimensions and then you right click and go to properties. You right click and go to props. You guys get that to work? All right. Now this is kind of cool too. Watch this. If we want to make, if we want to force a change on all of the dimensions, all we have to do is go to the dim style and make that change. So zoom up right here so you can see what's going on there. And we can see right now that isn't very good process because I got the way that the two arrowheads are different. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go up to the dim style. I'm going to make a change on that dim style. So I'm going to do the dim style manager. I'm going to modify it. I'm going to do two changes. I'm going to go to the symbols and arrows. I'm going to get rid of dot and make that a closed fill. And I'm going to set my text to standard. So I'm going to hit OK and close it. And you should notice that all of the dimensions that were governed by that style have now been updated to the one, to the two settings that we made. Change the arrows, and I change the text. That is the best way of driving changes or edits across the board on dimensions. So that dim style takes a little bit of getting used to, guys. It's not simple, but it's not, it's not that hard either once you start using it. But you just got like, I don't know, I've never counted them. I bet there's close to 100 variables in there though. But not all of them are used for every occurrence of every dimension. So it gets easier. We are going to do a little bit of dimensioning in AutoCAD. And we'll do more dimensioning in Inventor. And everything I'm teaching you now, you're going to see in Inventor, they have they have tools to do dimensioning with. They have a style that you can use. So everything works the same way. Uh, except if you understand it here, it'll be real simple once we get to, real simple once we get to Inventor, guarantee it. Okay, any questions? Okay, I think, let me check something here. <laughs> I think that's pretty much all we're going to need for what we're going to be getting into in our labs. Now there is there is something kind of cool you can do with a dim style called a parent dimension and a child dimension. So in other words, 
in a, in one dimension style, you could have your linear dimensions work one way, look one way, your angulars look a different way, and your radiuses look a different way. Okay, so you got two ways to handle that. You create three different dim styles, and you make them current when you do the different types of creations, or you can do it all within one dim style, and that's a I don't want to go into that with you, but there is a way to do that. So if anybody really wants to get into that, I can sit down and show you how to do that. Um, I don't think, I'm going to show you one thing real quick. We don't need to probably do this too much, but I don't think, yeah. I want to show you one other tool that uh, is kind of cool. And this is called a multi-leader. So multi-leaders, aren't dimensions, there are things that convey text information, okay? So uh, let's go back to the home tab if we're not already to the home tab. And right here in that area, it says leader, but that's actually what they call an M leader, which stands for multi-leaders, okay? So multi-leader basically is a straight, is an arrowhead with a line connected to it, and then you got a piece of text, okay? So to place a multi-leader, we just go up here to this multi-leader tool. And actually, you'll notice there's create a multi-leader. You can add a leader line. You can delete a leader line. Or you can do things called a line. So let's just click, click, click on this one that says leader. And it's going to ask you to place the arrowhead. So I'm just going to place the arrowhead in the midpoint of this object right here. You just pull the guy out. And then you can just sell it whatever you want. So you might say, oh, I want to paint this, paint this green. Then when you're done, you hit that check right there, and that's your multi-leader. Okay. So it's not, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a dimension in the sense that it's kind of functioning together, but it has no information like dimension information. So it's more for information of text. Uh, like, like said, you know, you oil this, or you paint this, or you do something like that. Everybody see how that works? There's not much to it. And you can add a leader line to that. So if you go here, you can say add a leader. So you select this guy, and then you just pick another leader line, and another leader line, and another leader line. And when you're done, you hit enter. So it'll allow you to add them, allow you to subtract them. They're pretty cool. They're really cool little tools. And they also have a, they have a multi-leader style that drives them, okay? So that's kind of an important thing to understand too. But I don't think we're going to be doing that in any of these command, uh, any of these uh, drawings, so we don't have to worry about it. Okay. One thing I did forget to show you though, is something about text. So let's take a look at that real quick, and then we will be done for this lecture. I want you to go down here and. If you have this text all the way out, take it back to like a midpoint so it's reading less than the length of this line. Okay, I just wanna I wanna put it like that. All right. Is so everybody ready? So you can edit your text independent of the of the dimension itself. So understand that. When you place this with the def points, that piece of text, that information came from the distance between the def points. So if I double click on this, I can change things up. So I could come out here and I can add, come on, damn it. I can come out here and it won't. Why is that doing that to me? I must have something else on. Let me try that again. All right. Well, I could type this in as 5.00 inches. Okay. If I do that and hit OK or check it, what I did was I overrode that text. Okay. I overrode that text. So watch what happens here. If I move the def point on this, notice when I drag this thing out, What's happening to the way it reads? It still says what? That's not good, is it? <laughs> what I did was I corrupted the text. So it's still it's still what you call um, an associate dimension, 
but it's it, the text has been locked up. It's locked up to what I put it as, okay? So what you really don't want to do is actually change a number in here. Okay, so let's take this back to that endpoint right there. That should actually read 10 inches. It's not reading that, okay? So to fix that, what I need to do is double click on the text and I can replace that with a less than and a greater than sign. Once you do that, it says, oh, fix the text back to its default position. So the less than and the greater than says, take the default position. Okay. It's working right now if I double click it. No, it's not. That was weird. But anyway, that's something, be careful if you're going to, if you're going to do something in text, make sure that, I can add a, I can add a symbol like that. That's usually not a problem, as long as I don't corrupt the text. So if you notice, I, I added an inch symbol, that wasn't a problem. Adding an inch symbol worked, okay? But if you change the text value itself, that's when you get into problems. Okay, but all you have to do to fix that is put that greater than or less than sign back in there. Alright. I guess kind of the bottom line on text, if you're doing it in dimensioning, be very careful when you're editing it. Because you can lock it up. And you can lock it up. And then some people get like, whoa, what did I do here? How do I fix this? Okay. Alright, any questions? Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording. I'll get this guy set up and post it out on Blackboard for you guys. Um, I'm going to let you guys work. I'm going to go into the other room real quick, get them started on stuff, and I'm going to come back and give you guys some things, okay? We'll go over some things here in a minute, All right? So let me go ahead and stop the record.